What's going on, everybody? It is Co-Shade, and I'm here with Puddinhead. What's going on? Yo, yo. And we have Sharkbait. Hello. The wonderful movie icon, as his look today. <laughs> um, so this is the Dev Diary number three. Uh, so we are entering the third week in a few days of playtesting for this awesome summer project. Um, yeah. So it's been pretty awesome seeing all these games and stuff. And I think we're getting to that point where players are starting to get more comfortable with how Elementalist and Monk are feeling. And while they haven't quite maximized their books, I think, to what like a, a high-level Monk or Elementalist would be, uh, we're seeing them get strong cards and then other players not adapting to that yet, which I think is a really interesting meta like watch that uh, I've been sort of enjoying see all the games with there's an interesting thing to watch the entire thing evolve you know over the course of the yeah. last couple of weeks yeah especially like a monk i would say is actually really unique um because originally we saw a lot of key generation which is kind of traditionally how the monk was designed to be but uh, we're seeing also Pete players branch off into getting more of like you know how can i make double meteorite play work into a longer game or uh you know how could i make something like uh, the other mind school spells like Force Crush work into it, so it's it's a yeah. lot of interesting new ideas that like at first I was wondering if the monk was gonna feel too uh, rigid and that when you verse a monk you know it's probably gonna be uh, one type of book, but now we're seeing it's actually becoming a lot of things. Um, so yeah, I mean overall. Everyone's giving us feedback. I really do appreciate it. Even if we haven't like implemented issues that you might have brought up, they are on our watch list. Yep, we have and, a whole and watch we'll list. We'll get to that later um, on exactly like things we're looking for. Uh, we probably won't cover everything because like we're watching just tons of different stuff. But in, in general, um, we'll we'll talk about it as we go along. So yep. excuse these images if they're not perfect, but uh, we you have done some party, reworking. But... Um, Putin, I don't know if you want to take away the Elementalist or if you want me to go for yeah. it, but either yeah, way. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man, go for um, it. So Elementalist is getting a small tweak to f correct a couple of things and then an overhaul of one of his abilities. Um, the Earth Glyph was not listed as costing a mana. It costs mana. Um, we'll fix that here. Um, and his Natural Fury was never getting used, ever. Not a single time. I don't think I ever saw um, it. Maybe once. And it, it's just because it was too expensive and it was too hard to pull off and you need to have a wand to really maximize it and all this other stuff. It was just too tough. Um, so we reworked it so that it basically allows you to take a quick, uh, minor quick act, attack or incantation and extend it like you would a wall. Um, we can't use the extendable trait because the extendable trait specifically mentions wall cards we yeah it has issues with, with, with like range so, it has issues with so, range extension and it would be actually really rough to rewrite it you know if if it is confusing we could right. make a new trait but um but um yeah so natural fairly allows you to cast a fire stream and then cast another fire stream or cast a dissolve and then cast another dissolve and it increases the cost to do that by paying the level of mana in the spell. So you get one or two extra mana. You can do two spells with a full action. Um, but you also need to deactivate any two glyphs in order to make that happen. Yep. Um, now you're going to be able to reactivate one using the spells, but you have to deactivate two in order to get the ability off. And we just want to see if people start using it now, uh, if it's worth having. Uh, this is not the final version by any stretch of the imagination. We, have we've got a, yeah. a lot of testing to make it work. We want it to be fun. We want it to be uh, useful and not overpowered. Thanks. Um, so those are the feedbacks we're looking for. Um, did you use it? Was it fun? Did it work as intended? Did you run into issues? Uh, is it too strong? So. Yeah, and, yeah. and I, it's one of those things that um, we'd rather see it get used than not. Obviously, we don't want to make sure it's too strong. But, um, I mean, it's an idea. I mean, this is supposed to be sort of an elementalist that can fling these spells out at will. So, you know, if it doesn't work, we'll either come up with a new ability or we might just make it have a melee attack, which is fine. Yeah. Um, um, we, 
are looking at a kind of a cycle cyclical play for the elementalist kind of like the tidal play for the siren right so your cycle is to cast a big creature and then resonance it use it to get its ability while you save mana and then fury yep. right and you, you just get that cycle going and um you can uh hopefully be really good at taking out other big targets because you can focus fire um or focus air or whatever you yeah focus. so so one of the um, things that i'm i'm <laughs> nice. curious on is um seeing how ice interacts with natural fury um ice being something that players have tried out and have generally like shooed away from because it's very you either get it or you don't sort of thing and i'm hoping maybe by adding an extra attack into it uh granted with, a, with an incentive that's pretty strong um Maybe we'll see some more of that. Of course, you can do the double rock things like that. That is all possible. But uh, let's let's see some stuff with that. Basically, one thing that I'm watching with this iteration of it is um, it does use up more spellbook points faster. Um, now the elementalist has more spellbook points, so that shouldn't be a problem uh, in normal games. Uh, but especially if you're going to do something with frost for this, you're going to be burning through those frost spells a lot faster, and you might get more frost conditions but you also might run out of gas faster so yeah. that's something that i'm i'm watching for uh something something else that we're also looking at is the air glyph it might need to cost three mana to use that air glyph and the big reasons why we're seeing is um mainly because the stun chance is actually really good with it and the frost chance we've gotten games where they look pretty powerful but they're not necessarily too strong. And we want more data on that as we go along. So just something to keep in mind with air. It might go up to three, but that's going to be after we see some more games. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're looking at the cost for the air glyph for sure. Because obviously you use lightning spells for mainly, anyway, mainly for the day's stun chance. And, you know, when it's a five up stun, that could be extremely powerful for one mana extra. Um. Anything else? Anyone else comments on Elementals? Uh, that covers a lot of it. Yeah, we're we're changing some of his cards too, so that'll tie into what we're doing here. So we'll just move on. Yeah. Um. So Elemental Mail. Let me go ahead and move this a little bit. And eh, does that help? Does that help? No, I gotta. Yeah, you're fine. This. Yeah, on the stream. There we go. Okay. So, um, Elemental Mail. We got a lot of feedback on. Uh, that it might be a bit too strong. And honestly, I got to agree. I think, um, honestly, the games that I played, it seems a little bit too much that it was allowed to life bond with multiple creatures. Yeah, uh, the so, more than one around thing got a little ridiculous. So that being said, um, we have options of making it level two. And the thematically, lightning minus, you know, ice minus, it's not on here, but it should be ice minus. Uh, like all of those elemental minuses really do make a lot of sense with the elemental male. Um, so instead of allowing you to bond with a lot of creatures where you can disperse that damage everywhere, we're just saying, let's give it armor one. Let's keep its resistances. And let's let you bond with one other creature every upkeep. And then let's make it a level two spell and cost eight mana. Um, and the and the idea there is that we're hoping that it's it, it's not quite as powerful as like the holy armor, um, but it's up there with uh, you know other level two armor that that basically you know something like the harsh forge plate. I don't know. You say it's not as powerful as the holy armor. I think it's at least as good. At least as good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like harsh, good. harsh forge plate, the holy armor. You know, things like that are really useful, and we're hoping that this is on that level. Um, of course, you know the holy uh, the harsh forge plate adding two mana. Whenever something's casting you, that's insanely good. Um, and we're hoping that this is that. It might, that the resistances might be too much. I'm thinking no matter what, we're going to keep Armor 1 and the Life Bond 2. Uh, resistances might change. But, I mean, until we see games seeing, you know, exactly what, how, what kind of impact this is, I'm thinking we're at a good level. So, as always, uh, that's the kind of change we're giving. Um and we're and I think the mana cost difference also helps with this elementalist like ramp that we've been seeing, where typically it's been a lot of um, basically the elements elementalists having a lot of mana pretty much all the time. Um, anyway, elementalist mail. Anybody else want to say anything? Oh, man, you covered it really well. I think Sorry, you covered guys. it. 
No, that's good. Good. Pandemonium, Shark, uh -huh. you want to take Pandemonium? Sure. Respondemonium. So basically, <laughs> our little nickname is the Respondemonium, and in this case, instead of it getting a uh, level discount, which got closer to where we wanted from the first iteration, but it's a bit on the still too big of a discount side, and it encouraged turtling plays, which is not the intent behind the this, this spawn point here. And so in order to counteract that, you get more of a bonus the more zones that are adjacent to the pandemonium in the first place. So an example would be if you cast it in your corner, you only have two adjacent zones, which makes you only get a two mana discount, which is perfectly viable. However, if you want to maximize that discount, you go cast that out into the center zones where you get up to a four mana discount. Uh, one of the things we also added to this one was the fact that you can cast from anywhere and have it land in the element or the pandemonium zone. And you still have the reanimate on here for the same discount that you get for the cast. Like yeah, anything? yeah. So, so basically, a lot of the games that we saw with the elementalists is they were able to front load a lot of the mana to say, "I'm going to get three big dudes out right away, uh, two to three. And typically, that was just a little bit too much in the early game for for the opponent to deal with. Yeah, just a little too much. So we're hoping by raising the mana cost and by making it that you don't get those big discounts unless you have this out in the middle of the field uh, where it's super exposed, then uh, th th we're hoping that that basically allows him to ramp down a, sh a ton. And I do want to note that it is possible to get level one dudes, like the Rock Golem, for free with this, uh, if you manage to get it in the right zone. And reanimate them for free. And reanimate for free. Yeah. Um, Assuming and the reanimate has, has lost its once per round. Yes, um, yes. we brought so that can do it. Right, we did bring that yeah. back. So again, I don't, I don't think that this is necessarily uh, done by any means. But I think, I think it's a different approach to try to prevent turtle, try to prevent that front loaning of, of, of economy that we've seen. Or at least make it a tactical it. choice. You know? Yeah, it's hopefully going to bring it back into a line. And uh, if it's yeah. still too strong, we can always change it. So no yeah. worries on that. Uh, but let's try this out. Yeah, in a lot of the games that we saw, uh, very, very few people ever attacked the Pandemonium because they had too much other stuff to deal with. And I think um, it's because and... it was in the corner. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, and yeah, because it was able to be put in a safe place mm -hmm. and they were able to get extra large things off of yeah. it. So it's a combination uh, so, of being safe and yeah. a large discount from it. Yep. So you still can get a, a discount and you still can get some reanimate, but now the pandemonium has to be in a place where it becomes targetable um, mm -hmm. in order to get the most discount. And I, I think that's a really great try for getting it to be an option for players. Um, I, I don't know if it's just because players didn't think they could attack a spawn point or if they thought they were going to take too much damage or whatever, but we I, saw I know how in a I lot felt of cases yeah. that it wasn't getting hit. I, I know in my games I felt like it was it was very tough to hit it without overexposing yourself, um, which is typical of, of spawn points, but it was it fell yeah. into a, a bigger degree than like a, a, a temple or yeah. something like that. Thematically speaking, also, the, uh, the idea here is that... Uh, Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. The idea is that you're drawing power from the zones around it. Yeah. Which is where yeah, that yeah. comes from. Like a place of power kind of description. Um, otherwise, yeah. Uh, we are taking out the Glyph Pandemonium. Uh, that's no longer going to be an option to play. Uh, basically, yeah, no one used it. And uh, we're going to keep the channeling traditional spawn point in. Um, oh, are we? I we, listed that as cut. It, I don't know if we cut it. I thought we kept it in. I don't know. Okay. Either way, um, if you want to play traditional when you can, but it's likely on the cutting block. It's likely on the cutting block. Most players say they they like this uh this respawn point as we're calling it over the traditional one. Um, but if if we can't make it work, obviously we'll have to figure out exactly what we're gonna do. But uh, I'm feeling like we're getting in the good direction for this. Um, Stormfront Elemental, and uh, this goes along with Wind Elemental as well, that we'll get to in a second. We are basically reducing their life down to 12. Um, so it, they were up at 16. Uh, we think that 16 was a bit too high for it. Flying in Comporeal is really how these guys are strong. Yeah, it's their so big defense. If you compare like Whirling Spirit, which is way cheaper than these, they have 13 life in Comporeal. But traditionally, Flyers have less life when they have the same stats. So we're hoping 12 keeps it in line. And I'm going to show Wind Elemental here. 
making it down to 12. We're hoping that that basically allows people, players to go, okay, I can start beating this with cards that I can take now that can affect Ethereal. Um, and if we went too far the other way, let us know. We're, we're planning to adjust plus or minus one, depending on. Yeah, so so typically how we're seeing Stormfront Elemental get destroyed is things like uh, Gravicore and the Beatdown. Uh, we're seeing Arcane Zap, of course, but you know there are ways to get Arcane Zap-like effects on a wand, uh, such as, I think, a two-mana cost holy spell. I, th I forget what it's called. It's from uh, Academy. Uh, you can easily put that in your wand and get three dice. Uh, incorporeal. There's there's actually a ton of ways you can deal with these guys, and I'm I'm kind of hoping to see, you know, why don't we talk about it later? Uh, how some tactics we've talked about that we just aren't seeing in this, but um, you know, for now, let's just finish up the the changes we're making, uh, and that is we're reducing their life down. Yep, everything else is staying the same. Yeah, uh, meltdown. We're changing to zero to one. Uh, it was 0 to 2. It should be 0 to 1. It's just consistent with all the other uh, equipment uh, affecting cards. Uh, the Monk. When do you guys want oh to take boy. the Monk? We decided to remove the Resilient uh, version of Monk in favor of the Ghost Form version. Uh, and then we reworded Ghost Form to get rid of some interesting interactions so the way it currently reads is you can only do this during the declare attack step and that's if you're attacking or if you're being attacked um it's going to cost four key during the declare attack step and then for the rest of the round the monk takes damage as if incorporeal uh and having zero armor uh then the non-spell attacks that she does become ethereal and she can't use key for the rest of the round, which is the the normal um, ability at the end of yeah, this. It almost it almost so, is yeah. So what we we're having trouble with is going incorporeal made you non living and burn proof, and that meant that non ethereal spells that hit you wouldn't put any status effects on you, and you would drop all your burns, you drop all your weeks, and you drop all your cripples, and you drop all your taints because they don't work anymore. Um, and that's not what we we're going for. Um, we just were going for the idea that um, she can kind of get some sort of astral projection of herself that makes her in several different simultaneous places. And so you're not really sure you're hitting the same one, right? Um, but she's still a living creature. She's still a mage. She's still... Um, and, and in this way, we don't have crazy stupid stuff like uh find spirit locking her down for the rest of the game um stuff like that yeah we're trying to prevent a lot of things that would ultimately just kill a soul image um and in terms of uh with the zero armor i do want to clarify that's as if incorporeal with zero armor so if she does have corrodes they will stay on um because she's not actually losing her armor she's just the armor is not affecting her basically um yeah so if that wording is unclear please let us know as well we can take that into advisement right. as well absolutely. right we want to make this absolutely clear and the intention is that you basically treat her as if she were a spirit creature for an attack um, for the duration of the roll dice step yep basically we we can talk more about monk later but um i think that's essentially what we're doing with the changes that right is now. the yeah, it's the only thing we've changed on the Monk's card right now. Heck to the yeah. Uh, seismic Hammer. Uh, we wanted to reword how the ability functioned, and I'm not guaranteeing that it's perfect yet. Um, but bas not. basically the idea, I think there is still an issue if you're fast, but, um, but basically the idea is that if you take a full action, um, you target a conjuration, and then you push yourself towards that, and if you can't, because you can't, you're in the same spot, space, that's fine. And then basically, if you're able to do that action, you and able to melee attack then that conjuration, you can add three dice to that attack. It's supposed to be the hammer sending you to that conjuration to hit it. If there's a guard that blocks it, you don't get that bonus because they interrupted that magical ability. Um, so I'm hoping so that's more So you can clear. push. What you're saying is you can push yourself. You must. Even I if can. there's a guard. Well, if you take the full action... You must push yourself into that zone. But if there's a guard there, 
you have to hit the guard yes. instead of the conjuration. Well, you don't have to hit the guard. You just can't melee attack the conjuration. That so you can just use this to move if you wanted to. As a full action, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, granted, you wouldn't be able to melee attack anything after that. So it's just unless it was a conjuration, move. right? Unless it was a conjuration, yeah. So I hope that's more clear. It may not be, and that's fine. We can keep going over this every week, but I'm hoping that it's getting skewed in a good way. Um, by the way, this card um, might be too strong for Monk right now, but I'm not convinced either way. But we're keeping an eye on it, just because yeah. the two being able to use the two action full uh, right the two full the action two full actions. Yeah, um, pretty rough. Granted, pretty rough. there aren't many games where we see like a a conjuration and the monk attacking it. And generally in those games, people aren't guarding with their creatures. So it's possible that there's a simple fix to it. Uh, and that's just tactics. Um, that's kind of why we're not changing it right now, by the way, is because we, we haven't seen anything significant to show that it is too good. Uh, five point death strike. We're adding the curse subtype to that. Uh, it's pretty powerful. And we think that adding the curse gives it a little bit more ways of destroying it. Ironically, a sub sub monk type warlock, uh, Raxian, would actually benefit from this because they get the card back. Um, but if the creature dies, if the creature dies, but uh, we're just doing that change to, to nerf it a little bit. Uh, I guess Ring of Curses works on it as well too. But uh, overall, we're we're hoping that it doesn't feel like for either when the monk gets five point death strike or someone else that they don't have as many options. Uh, harmonize. Uh, there was a target line that was creature. It's just object. It's what it originally was. We're trying to fix it. <laughs> yep. It's just the it's, only thing that should, should have ever changed on harmonize was that we added the song subtype. Yeah. That's the only yeah. thing that should have changed. Nothing yep. else was actually changed from the function so, of the card. Whoops. Done. Done. Deal. All right. And that's all the changes. That's all the changes. Uh, let's go over. Uh, we we cut the resilient monk. We cut the quick action weapon strike. We cut yes. Elemental Sword that just gave you flat effect rolls Yes. for a glyph. We cut the Void, which was the other non-monk key generator. The Void was like and, the ring, but worse, Yeah. basically. And we cut, I think, didn't we cut Drake version 2 also? The one that um, did creatures? We did. Oh, yeah. yeah, we did. We did cut the Drake, yes. The creature yeah, we cut the, 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 non... the creature Drake. Yep. Yeah, the non-glyph Drake. And um, and then we cut a few versions of the Pandemonium. I think we cut the the Glyph one is specifically what we cut from Pandemonium. Um, yeah, we, we definitely cut Pandemonium, and I, we probably cut the traditional spawn point. But if you want to use it, I guess it's probably still going to exist. Just figure it out. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's one really of those things that, that if we don't make respawn as an option, then we'll probably have to go back to that. But you know, we'll make it work. Yeah. Um, we're probably not going with traditional spawn point, is what I'm saying. Um, Shark, do you want to talk about these octagon patch notes at all? Uh, yeah, I, could do that. I posted them earlier. They're in the Discord. I probably should post them on the forums at some point too. But a bunch of minor things with this one. Um, you may notice also. I think this patch had it where the out of game spellbook builder should function again. It does not include any of the new stuff though. So. It functioning will give you and get you to the ballpark, but the in-game validator is the one that's accurate right now. So, um, yeah, don't rely too much <laughs> strictly on what the out-of-game one will tell you, but it'll, it'll at least spit out a number, and most of the old stuff will work. Yeah, it'll spit um, out a number. I love it. <laughs> yeah. The living armor, a lot of this is minor. Like, living armor was accidentally prompting both people to pay for it. Uh, oh, so I think that melting should automate, um, and frozen tundra should stop it. Freeze tokens have art. A lot easier to see now. They don't function automatically, though, so there's no minus two life. Does deep freeze uh, stop melting also? No, because I forgot that it did that. So we'll put in the list. I can okay. do that at some we point. do a list every <laughs> week. If you guys find something in Octagon, just let us know. Yeah, I just forgot about that one. Uh, Meditating Monk will no longer spawn with three key. Awesome. Whoops. Uh, Dampening Cloak actually should work against range. Oh, that's um, awesome, actually. Rock on. In my brief one player testing, it was working, but. Just let me know if it, if I broke it on accident. Uh, the Drake's melee attack exists now. Exists. It uh, previously did not. <laughs> Wind Elemental is now immune to his own zone attack on the automation, so you don't have to worry about that. And all oh yeah, all the stuff that's being cut on our cut list is 
going to be removed from the game next week. They are labeled in the Spellbook Builder. You can see them. It's not hard to tell which ones are getting cut. Make sure they're not in your books, because if they are in a book you want to use, you cannot load it again once I take it out. Okay. Gasp. So, not a huge deal. Just be aware of it. Yeah, I know. I have to go back and look at some books to make sure that's it's like that, yeah. too. They sh the same cards, like, if we cut them, the same cards should just be renamed and still be in the book. They just, you know. I'm going to try and set up a reminder just to remind people that to change their books because it won't be valid anymore. Right. Um, yeah, they just, they just won't load. Exactly. It'll it'll like have an error and stuff like that. Shark, as always, I appreciate all the work you do on Octeon, man. Hey, no Absolutely. No, it's it's really useful stuff. Um. So, uh, talk about feedback focus. So let's talk about Monk really quick. Um. I was saying earlier that there's a lot of uh, variety that we're seeing on Monk, uh, where we're not just seeing a key generation um, or a, like a Battleforge reliance sort of thing. That's good. I really like seeing that. And I I want people, I guess, to... So so basically, here, here's the complaints we're seeing a lot. And this is a solo mage that's not designed like Force Master, um, where it has like Force Field, things like that. Uh, she's designed to be like a true solo mage. Um, so when players have taken in the past, like mass tangle vines, force holds, tar traps, um, to lock down solo mages, and they've said, I've covered solo mage, I can just lock them down and kill them. That's exactly what we're trying to avoid right now with the monk. The, yeah, the tactics um, will be very different this time. So that being said, I don't want to have a monk that's always going to feel like she can run everywhere and do whatever she wants. And I think what we might be seeing right now is an older book of meta where you can easily have six tangle vines and say, that's it. They're locked down, period. Um, and what I'm hoping we see is a shift more to like days stunning or staggering, Slam. slamming, um, things like that, like obviously slamming is important, incapacitating. I mean, there's knockdown that does exist. Um, like I'm hoping we see books start to incorporate things that does deal with monk. Um, instead of just saying we should just change the monk because our books fit better if we change it. And, and of note, it's not just hope. This is the kind of data we want this week. So, so when you do build your stuff and play test them, play test yeah. both of them against anti monk or anti elementalist. We'll we talk about elementalists in a second. Yeah, yeah not everyone's going to be able to, you know, it's not going to be purely representative, but we want to know if at least the counters right. that are in the game work. Yeah. So, like, things like lightning it, spells have largely been yeah. discarded because basically they don't do as much damage as fire or rock. Maybe with the monk existing now, you might consider a few. A stagger, I'm just going to put it out that stagger gives you minus two dice to your yep. melee attacks. Uh, that's insane yeah, that's against huge. the monk. That's one yeah. third of her melee attack. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really good. Things like agony, chains of agony. Yeah. We haven't seen any of those get played. Uh, chains of cool. agony. Like there are. Funny enough, five point death strike is yeah. the bane of the monk's existence. Yeah, five point death strike, absolutely. Um, and I do want to point out that now that she has a better incorporeal, I'm hoping that weeks come back. If you yeah, weak out a monk. Up. They're actually pretty screwed. But so yeah, far, we haven't to, seen they'd that They'd have to deal with it. I wouldn't call them screwed. They'd have to deal with it, which changes what they have yeah. to do during the turn, you know? We're hoping that so. it's... We're hoping the monk's not screwed in that case, too. But, like, if, it, 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 it's tough. To, yeah. if, if what's going on is they're spending one of their actions dealing with your stuff instead of punching you in the face, you're yeah. actually winning. Yeah. And, um, and, and I know Mage Wars has, yeah. in a large part, been... Let's just rock them to death. You know, let's get these high attack spells that are just like let's just cream them as fast as possible. And maybe with a monk, that'll help change a sort of meta and how that's looked at in a lot of ways. Yeah, it'll open up a lot more tactical and strategic options as well in general. But we're not seeing people utilize the new stuff. We're, we're, I, we'd like to see more of it. And and I kind of understand why Grey Wraith wasn't taken right because Grey Wraith has traditionally yeah. just been murdered. Like it's been mm -hmm. so not worth it to cast it. But maybe now with this incorporeal change, it's worth trying out something that can cause weeks. It might actually know? be decent against Monk. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, Monk going into corporeal form, that, that does open up a lot of other things, of course. So, like, they can't use key the rest of the round, so that means they can't parry. So that means all your attacks are going to land. You know, there's, there's all sorts of reasons that you want to 
uh, try and change up your styles. But most of the games that we've seen where it's... I'm sorry, there's been one game we've seen where the monk runs around and then one other reported. And in, in both of those cases, it's usually been because Tar Trap, Forest Hold, Tangle Vine hasn't worked. Um, yeah. Talking about the elementalist. So we're talking about feedback focus. So like things we're hoping that people do when they combat these mages or when they play these mages. Um, we're looking for books that actually try to adapt to using ethereal. Um, usually players have taken maybe a bolt or two, maybe a thought, uh, force hammer. Um, we're hoping that with this ethereal change, it's not just elementalists you're going to have problems with. We're hoping that things like, you know, like a necromancer that uses spirits, um, yeah. you yeah. know, like a wizard that uses whirling spirit, things like that. We're hoping that all of those things become more viable. I know that, uh, Warlock would also probably really appreciate, uh, having some books that have incorporeal into it. And basically, yeah, the fire elemental is a nice thing. We're hoping you spend more than four points in your book to deal with an entire class of cards, basically. And um, yeah. you know, maybe it should be ten, maybe it should be fifteen. But uh, the, the fact is, is that how much do you need to do that? Yeah, That's yeah. What we want to know. How much does it take to combat these guys? Is it too much, too little? Show us. Because some players you know? are actually just choosing not to engage in ethereal at all, and then winning by just dealing direct damage. But some players are yeah. dying to that and saying, I have nothing to combat this. And uh, we're hoping that, uh, you know, there's there are a plethora of cards out there, especially, um, you know, things like Chains, uh, Chains of Agony, things like that. Agony Those are all great. super useful. And uh, I guess what we're looking for is books that have said, I'm going to fight Ethereal. And if that takes over a meta, we're hoping that all the books have to start doing that so that it's not just a okay, I have six rocks. It's instead I have things to deal with ethereal, things to do other things so that um, you don't feel like other mages will just beat you by yeah. you having ethereal because they'll have to have it as well. Uh, I th hope that was clear. We want more data Change on your book. trying to build anti-monk and anti-elementalist. Show it to us. And we're only like in the specifically third. Specifically build a, to play. It's gonna. It may suck as the monk and the elementalist, but we want to see what happens when someone builds directly against them. Straight up play. Yeah, against directly them. against would be nice as well. Just Pretend to be you like, know it gets exactly what you're facing you and know. show us how the counters do or do not work. That's where we're gonna start for now. Um. So going with that, um, I, I suppose it's just one of those things that we're only in the third week of play testing, so it's very normal to have the kind of reactions we're having right now, where it's something that's new and players saying there's no way to fight it. And there has been some balance issues I've seen with the elementalists and stuff with our corrections. But, you know, along with those balance changes, we're hoping that you improve as players when you play test as well yep. on how to combat those things. Um, and and yeah. just think, when this gets released and other people buy it, you'll have an edge. Because <laughs> you'll yeah, know all absolutely. about it. Yeah, because you already know exactly what you do to fight it. Yep. Um, uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, basically that's it. Yeah, we're... We're we're plugging right along, and honestly, we're starting to make smaller and smaller changes each week, which means we're starting to target where we're going. Um, yeah, um, we'll start focusing on like the promos and the errata and stuff like that once we get the the new mages in a good place. Yeah, I mean, monk right now, I, I think elementalist is pretty much set. Natural fury probably the only thing that changes. I mean, maybe some minor other things, but monk right now is probably the biggest concern I have. Yeah. Um. And I, I just need more data, honestly. We've seen some good stuff. I, we've seen a lot more games where the monk works versus when the monk doesn't work. Um, so that's really that makes me happy a lot. We've also seen plenty of games where the monk just loses, which yes. conceptually still yes, working absolutely. is fine. Yeah, but, and, and yeah. honestly, by looking at those games, a lot of those games were player mistakes, where it's like, okay, cool, they made an error here, so they died. Yep. That's exactly how Major Wars works, you know? Um, and let me see what else. Oh, yeah, so... I know DOT has been talked about again as an issue. Yeah. It's always kind of been an issue. Um, but I like the games that I saw. And I just want to talk about that really quick. So DOT... Okay, so basically the feeling of DOT is bad, right? Like if you get force crushed and you have nothing to counter it and die that way, that's like the worst nightmare, right? Because you just kind of died from nothing, right? But um, Died from the... lack of dispel. I just there wanted are, to talk yeah, really there quick. There are a lot of counters that exist, though. Yeah, I just want to talk about the counters really quick. Yeah. Now, personally, when I deal with DOT, it depends on the book. But 
my basic thing that I have in most books, and you don't have to have this. I know plenty of other players that don't do this. Um, but I just do a Mage Wand, Purge Magic, with Dispel, Remove Curse. Usually two Dispels. And usually what I do is I switch the Mage Wand for Purge. I eliminate way more mana than they spent by spending that Purge. And then I get the Mage Wand out of there for Wand of Healing. I let him repeat it until it's done. Now, there are other methods, such as a swarm method, where you just... Yeah, I tend to run... Yeah, talk about it, man. I guess it depends on the mage, but yeah. certain mages I'll run them down with my creatures instead. And honestly, if I feel like being stuck in a place is a problem, lesser teleport really helps. Lesser teleport. The mobility aspect of it. Um, you can put on regen, which they will then have to dispel, which means that most of the time they'll have to get into range. Uh, there's a lot of ways to at least delay it to the point where your book works faster than theirs does. Staying in the two center zones allows you to really hit them uh, yep. uh, with counter spells, things like that. Um, there's always ways to fight it. Don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, I mean, a in... couple of big creatures that can't be controlled as easily yeah. works well. Uh, you can corner the one who's running away. Oftentimes, you can uh, remove curse and purge and purify are all very efficient ways action to to use your actions to deal with it. Um, and then you can use global effects too. I mean, you can use rolling fog and then they won't be able to see you. You can use, um, what is it? You can harsh forge monolith right next to where you're locked down and then everything costs more. Um, so you, you've got stuff that you can do. I honestly, I, I always recommend that if you have problems with a certain kind of book, play it and see what kills you. And then add that thing to, to your that. normal book. Yeah. Right? So. Um, so that being said, I'm not, like, saying that DOT is completely fine by any means. I realize that, again, if you ever play Magic the Gathering, blue can get very frustrating. And I think it fell out of the meta because, basically, most people didn't like to play against it. Um, and, and ultimately, frankly, the counters, if you go pure dot, it's tough to actually win. Yeah, that's, that's also, I'll agree problem. with that. So it's one of those things, I guess, that, I'd, I'd like to see more games if you guys are interested. You should probably ask your opponent if they are okay with playing against DOT because of that frustration I was talking about. Um, but um, I don't know. Like, if it doesn't work out and it is really annoying still, where players we would don't, love to see the video replay or evidence yeah. of it. Then we obviously we we have to talk about how to balance that. But yeah, uh, we'll until we, we get there, it. that's kind of how we're addressing it right now. Is is we get it but we also haven't seen games of DOT win. I mean, just straight up, you know? Yeah. Uh, we've seen a lot of players give up where they had cards that can do things that they chose not to, is what we yep. saw. Um, which, you know, leaving a game during a playtest game early is unfortunate. Um, I think that's all. That's all I've got for this week. Anything uh, anyone else want to talk about? I guess, yeah. If there's, if Open there's to questions now. In the, chat room, uh, the, the card <laughs> contest, we are going to update tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Every Friday. And uh, currently, it's looking like we're going to have... What is it? We're tied on creatures and enchantments. Nice. For the first for one. For both? Oh, okay. And the other one, it's probably going to be a creature. For this, so the the flaming angel is probably going to be a creature. The guarding dude is probably either going to be an actual dude or an enchantment. So if you haven't voted yet, get it in. I haven't voted yet, so I don't want to be the one that decides it. But I might. I don't I know. Put, earlier. Put in if you Just voted. Get it done. All right, you already know my answer on that one. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I mean, essentially, if it doesn't change it, I'll I'll just I'll just vote and be done with it. Haha. <laughs> nice. Oh man. You said you didn't want to make the decision. I will do it, man. I'll do it. If no one else We're just gonna have to make two cards. I mean I mean three cards. We could No, that's just not gonna work. Let's make it a <laughs> uh, let's make it a creature <laughs> enchantment card, but that went way too oh, far. Oh my gosh. It's a hidden <laughs> it's a hidden creature. Yeah, you something attach crazy it like to that. something and then it becomes another creature. <laughs> That just gets weird. I, I don't know what to say if it's tied. Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing uh, uh, what schools they're in. School or schools, not sure yet, obviously. Cool. Um, 
chat room is active today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I know a lot of people have been watching on YouTube lately. So I guess it's one of those things that uh, yeah. if anyone has any questions, concerns, you want to bring things up, uh, feel free to do that now. Um, otherwise, as always, we are looking at the monk and making sure that, you know, is the uncontainable trade okay? Is the key generation going okay? You know, we've got a lot of plans if, if things end up going you Yeah, know, we've done a lot crazy. of elementalist fixing lately, so it's it, we're going to cycle back and focus on the monk a bit. Yeah, yeah. And we, we still have at least... I mean, we have as much time as we need, but we've got at least another, uh, I would say, six to eight weeks of testing here. So, yeah. you know, don't burn yourselves out, but uh, we are hoping for more games. Sweet. And we'll keep updating every week. I guess that's uh, about it for this one, then. And we'll we'll cool. let you know if you're slacking. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys all rock. Again, thank you for playtesting. Um, Thanks for the help, Shark, you guys are always awesome. I like to pretend to be. Um... You are, Shark. You are. For anyone that is watching on YouTube, please feel free to leave comments. Um, we are trying to do and gather information everywhere. So, um, you know, tell us what your favorite part of Monk is. Something like that, you know? Or your least favorite so we can fix it. Or your least favorite. What you absolutely hate. So, yeah. You guys all rock. We're signing off here. Goodbye. It's right the fire, right? Nothing. No, kill it. Kill it with something that's not fire. People use fire all the time. Kill it with frost. Kill it with frost. Kill, yeah, with, frost. Frost. kill with freeze. Give give a give a brother frostbite. It's oh.